Okay, a little bit of a research update on protein post-workout. So it used to be believed that there was a very narrow anabolic window that you must consume protein immediately post-workout if you wanted to maximize muscle growth. Delaying to have protein post-workout means that you weren't capitalizing on the effects of your workout and you weren't getting the best result. Then there was a meta-analysis back in 2013 which refuted this. So a meta-analysis is basically a study of studies. Put all the studies together and evaluate the body of literature as a whole. Now, there are a couple of big reasons why it questioned this uh, belief of a very narrow anabolic window. Number one, reliance on acute studies. An acute study looks at a short-term marker. For example, something like muscle protein synthesis. Now, we don't necessarily care about a spike in muscle protein synthesis if it doesn't cause muscle growth in the long term. So we care about endpoint markers, muscle growth, muscle strength, etc. Number two, if you have group A and you have group B, group A gets protein post-workout and group B doesn't, group A gets better results. Is that the protein timing that's caused that or just the fact that group A has had extra protein? If you give someone protein post-workout and they get a better result, they've had an increase in protein intake. So it's unfair to say that timing is what's caused this if they've just consumed more protein than they were before or more protein than the control group. So it's important that we look at longitudinal research, looking at actual endpoint markers like muscle growth and muscle strength. And it's important that we look at protein matching between groups. So in this meta-analysis, in terms of longitudinal research, only three studies met the inclusion criteria of protein matching between groups. Of these three studies, only two of them were in well-trained athletes. Of these two, one showed benefit to protein timing and one did not. However, this protein timing was not a case of before workout or after a workout. It was a case of close to a workout or separated from a workout. So this new study is the first one that looks at protein pre or post-workout in well-trained athletes. That's where it slots into the body of literature. So, 10 weeks, the study was 10 weeks long, and they trained three times per week with whole body training. So the pre-workout group would consume protein immediately pre-workout, but instructed not to eat for three hours post-workout. The post-workout protein group had protein immediately post-workout, but instructed not to eat for three hours pre-workout. So there was a gap on either side. Now, at the end of the 10 weeks, there was no statistically significant differences in terms of muscle growth and muscle strength. So people who were drinking protein in their anabolic window did not outperform those who were consuming the protein pre-workout. So basically, if someone's consuming enough protein over the course of the day in protein matched conditions, protein post-workout does not beat protein pre-workout. That's your conclusion. Now, there's a few things that I, I think you should note. So this is in well-trained individuals training three times a week. Would you necessarily extrapolate this to advanced bodybuilders who have been training for 20 years who are training six times a week? Perhaps not. Number two, it was designed to be an in-muscle gain phase. Uh, participants were instructed to consume more calories to, to build muscle mass. However, their body weight at the end of the trial had gone down on average. So basically, dietary adherence is questionable. And of course, if dietary adherence is questionable, you then have to question how accurately they were tracking calories, proteins, carbs, and fat. So although dietary recommendations for both groups were the same, how strictly people followed that it's always going to be tricky in a free living condition study versus something like a metabolic ward. So basically your conclusions are protein immediately post-workout does not necessarily be protein pre-workout. So if you're consuming enough protein over the course of the day and you're consuming it at regular-ish intervals, protein timing probably isn't going to matter. If you're someone who does a lot of fasting, for example, intermittent fasting in your training in the morning, a good fail-safe solution for muscle growth would probably be consuming something with protein in pre-workout, whether it's food or a protein shake or whatever, and again, something post-workout just to make sure you've got your bases covered.
So generally speaking, the importance of the anabolic window it is not there. It, it, there's nothing that, that cements that it's as crucial as people used to believe. It doesn't necessarily mean that consuming protein post-workout is a bad idea, but believing that it is absolutely crucial to muscle growth, that's just, just not the case as demonstrated in this. So generally speaking, as long as you're consuming some protein pre-workout, some protein post-workout, and you're hitting your protein target over the course of the day, you're probably going to be fine. If in doubt, consume a little bit extra protein pre and post workout and then you've got nothing to worry about anyway. So that's it. I hope it's been useful. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. My Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter Personal Training. My Twitter and Instagram pages are both BDC Carpenter. Thank you for watching. Bye.